Today we're going to be looking at how to draw ISO lines, which are points that connect, which are lines that connect points of equal value. And we can connect points of equal whatever it is we want to. In the case of this map, we're going to be drawing isotherms, which connect points of equal temperature. So this isotherm line that's drawn is connecting the points that have a temperature of 15 degrees. So the line goes through every point that's labeled 15, and everything that's on one side of the line is smaller. Everything that's outside of the line is a bigger number. So if we were going to draw the 13 degree ISO line, we'd need to locate all of the numbers, all of the locations that have a temperature of 13 degrees. And then we would connect all of the points that have that temperature of 13 degrees, making sure that all of the bigger numbers stay outside, all of the smaller numbers stay inside. So our ISO lines, if you notice this one forms a closed loop. All ISO lines either need to form a closed loop or reach the edge of the map. Notice if we were to continue this one off of the map that's drawn, it would also form a closed loop. If we wanted to draw the 19 degree ISO line, we would need to find all of the numbers that are 19. So I've got a 19 here and here and here, 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 and here. And I'm going to connect all of the 19s, keeping all the numbers that are, in this case, it's bigger numbers toward the middle. So all of the numbers that are bigger inside and all of the numbers that are smaller outside. So the 19 ISO line is going to go between the 18 and the 21 because if I'm going to go from a location that's 18 degrees to a location that's 21 degrees, I know that it has to be 19 degrees somewhere in between. I need to make sure I keep that 20 on the inside of the loop, the 18 outside, and bring this around. Now everyone's might look a little bit different, so I can make this reach the edge of the map. I could sneak that around to form a closed loop, just making sure that I don't actually hit the 20. So the ISO lines are not necessarily going to be absolutely identical in terms of how they go in between the points that are actually labeled, but I do need to make sure that all of the bigger numbers are on one side of the line, all of the smaller numbers are on the other side. If I take a look at this temperature field map, we're asked to draw the 20, 22, 24, and 26 degree isotherms. So the first thing we want to do is find all of the points that have a temperature of 20 degrees or lower. And I'm just going to mark them with a color. So this one is 20 degrees and everything else is higher. So I want my 20 degree isotherm to actually go through the point that's labeled 20. Now these actually have little dots on the map. So the dots are, are representing the location that has the temperature next to it. On the previous one, there were no dots. So we just assume that that number is centered over the location that has that temperature. So I want to go through the 20, and it's going to go through the 20 and out to the edge of the map so that all of the bigger numbers are on one side and anything smaller would be on the other side. Next, I'm going to draw the 22 isotherm. So I'm going to look at all the numbers that are 22 or smaller. So right here, here, we've got a 21 and a 22. So again, I need to go through every point that's 22 and around the ones that are smaller. So all of my ones that are less than 22 have to be on one side of the line, everything that's higher on the other side. So again, we're going to reach the edge of the map, go through the 22, through the 22, through the 22. I need to go up because that 21 needs to be on the same side of the line as the other 21 and the 20. And then this can go around and go through that 22 and that 22 and off to the edge of the map. 
to the, draw the 24 isotherm, I'm going to look at all of the points that are 24 or lower. And again, I need to go through all of the 24s and then keep all of the smaller numbers, which are also marked with that same color on one side of the line, the same side that had the other smaller numbers as well. So I'm going to go from the edge of the map through the 24, through the 24, through the 24, through the 24, and through the 24. So notice this is separating all of the ones that I've colored regardless of what color they had since I was going in order from everything that is still white. The last one we're asked to do on this is the uh, 26 isotherm. So we are going to color everything that is 26 or lower, which is essentially everything except that 27. So I need to go through the 26, through the 26, through the 26, and my 26 line is going to go between the 25 and the 27. So I'm separating everything that was shaded from that one number that's not shaded. Now this could go to the edge of the map, or I could have ended up forming it as a closed loop going through that 26 as well. So again, Everything, everyone might have slightly different maps, but every ISO line either needs to reach the edge of the map or form a closed loop. You can't have it just stopping in the middle of your graph and you can't have it running into another ISO line. If we look on the back, the one on the bottom is a little bit, not more difficult, but it's not as nicely organized in that grid pattern. So we just need to be a little bit more careful of making sure that we find all of the numbers that are of a particular um, temperature. So we've got 18, so we're going to shade everything that's 18 or smaller. And that's it, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go through the 18s, keeping anything else that was shaded on one side and all of the unshaded on the other. So it's the exact same process. If I'm doing the 22, I'm going to, or the 20 degree ISO line, I'm going to find the 20s and lower. And then I get, again, I need to go through the 20, through the 20, through the 20, and off the page everything that's shaded on one side, everything that's not shaded on the other. The other thing that I am going to have you do when you're done with them is just finish shading in all of these numbers were shaded in, in orange. So I'm just gonna have you shade in the remainder of the portion in between those lines in orange. So everything that's shaded orange would have a temperature between 20 and 18. Everything that's shaded in purple would have a temperature that is less than 18. So you're just gonna finish up by shading in all of that. We don't know the exact temperatures there, but that color code would at least tell us that everything is in that same range. So again, remember every ISO line must either reach the edge of the map or form closed loops. And those closed loops would be concentric one 